Shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. In this Civ overview, we're going to be taking an in-depth look at the Burgundians. They're tagged as a cavalry civilization, though as we'll see their gunpowder is also arguably top tier as well. Of course, for many players, the first thing that comes to mind when you hear Burgundians is some of their unusual mechanics. In a recent poll on the official Age of Empires forums, they were actually voted the third worst designed Civ, which may be a little harsh, but their unique tech, Flemish Revolution especially, is quite polarizing, and we'll talk about that more in depth. By online win rate, according to the stats, the Civ is average to slightly below average on open maps, and can struggle particularly in the early game, though on closed maps they're much stronger, bordering on being top 5. If you love booming and overpowering your opponents with hard hitting units, the Civ may be a great fit for your playstyle. Let's check them out. Starting off with their team bonus, Burgundians and all of their allies have their relics generate food in addition to gold. Both generate at the same rate, which works out to being slightly better than a late game farmer. Maps typically generate anywhere between 5 relics in a 1v1 game up to 8 relics in a 4v4, so essentially that means there's 6 to 10 farmers worth of extra food income that's up for grabs. Now I wouldn't consider this an incredibly strong team bonus, and it has no impact on the game until at least Castle Age. But with 3 or 4 relics, it can give around an extra 1000 food every 10 minutes, so it can certainly add up. Moving on to their civilization specific bonuses, the first is that they get their eco upgrades and age early, and also cost half as much food. I talked recently about the payback time of various eco upgrades, and what makes this bonus so intriguing is the lower food cost, letting you justify getting tax with fewer villagers than usual. Just looking at the standard land map techs, it saves almost 1300 food, about half of which is coming from all of the castle age techs you can pick up in feudal. Cheaper technologies would be a good bonus on its own, and reminiscent of a sieve like the Vietnamese having their discount on eco techs as well, but for Burgundians getting them in age earlier in combination with that actually has a lot of synergy. To give a couple of examples, with a reasonable number of lumberjacks you get around a 1 minute faster payoff on both double bit axe and bow saw. It's very common for Burgundian players to pick up double bit axe on the way to feudal age, or sometimes even in dark age, followed up by bow saw again at some point either during feudal or on the way up to castle. Likewise, it's easier to pick up horse collar early, saving almost 40 food right there, and even the gold mining tech starts to look tempting much earlier than it usually would. Normally, gold mining needs 13 villagers for a sub 5 minute payback, so it's often delayed in competitive play. But for Burgundians, they get the same payback time with just 9 villagers. Remember, even if you're unable to sneak a technology one age earlier, you're still eventually getting it cheaper, so you're benefiting either way. The odd case I have to point out though is, of course, Wheelbarrow. While you technically have access to it in Dark Age, Wheelbarrow comes at the cost of 3 villagers from the town center, meaning even with its cheaper cost, it still makes sense to grab around the usual time, regardless of your early access. Two man saw and crop rotation are also a little underwhelming, and there's probably better ways to spend your resources in Castle Age even with the food discount. So far, we haven't really seen why they're called a cavalry civilization though, and that's addressed with their next two bonuses, which work together really nicely. The first is their stable techs cost half as much, giving a 50% discount on both food and gold. For the scout to Hazard, that saves 650 resources, plus another 1300 on the cavalier and paladin, and a little extra on husbandry as well. Notice they don't have access to bloodlines, which is quite unusual for a civilization with a cavalry focus. Making up for that fact, they have access to the cavalier upgrade in Castle Age. After considering the discount on that upgrade, in Castle Age they end up being pretty similar to a knight with bloodlines. The only difference is plus 2 attack, so you're basically getting bloodlines for the regular price, plus 2 more attack for only 50 gold. Against a fully upgraded knight with bloodlines, head to head the Burgundian Cavalier ends with about a quarter of their HP left. 
Functionally, they're identical to Lithuanian knights with two relics, though they're just barely beaten by a Bulgarian 33% faster attacking knight. While they may not be quite top tier in Castle Age, they're certainly not far off, and really for no additional cost. In fact, the only downside I can see in Castle Age is Cavalier takes twice as long to research as Bloodlines, giving other civilizations a small window. Scouts into Knights followed up by an early Cavalier is a very popular strategy for Burgundians, and even the psychological effect of seeing an Imperial Age unit in early Castle Age can be quite intimidating. One thing to keep in mind though is against Archers and Town Center Fire, they actually perform identically to a regular Knight with Bloodlines, meaning as impressive as they look, it's still important to prioritize your armor upgrades. Of course, all of this means their Paladins don't have Bloodlines, giving them a significantly lower ceiling. But considering the Paladin upgrade is half price as well, I'd argue they end up being more viable in 1v1, though maybe a little worse in drawn out team games. Personally, I really like how this contrasts with the Franks, who both geographically and design wise could have had too much crossover. The way they've done it though, Franks are especially strong at scout rushing and have high HP on their late game Paladins, whereas Burgundians have a mediocre scout rush and below average Paladins with a strong mid game power spike. The way they've designed Burgundians keeps the two civilizations feeling thematically similar, but they excel at very different times. Their final bonus is that their gunpowder units have plus 25% attack. On its own, that sounds pretty decent, but what if I told you it was actually plus 30, or even plus 40% more? The bonus shows up directly in the attack of hand cannons, for example, as plus 4 attack. Notice though, if we actually calculate the increased damage, it's 29 or 32% more, not 25 which at first may seem odd. Even more curious, against Paladins it's even stronger, taking 5 fewer shots to bring one down, and seemingly doing about 40% more damage. What's happening is they're multiplying the damage before considering armor, which means against units with relatively high armor you get a greater advantage than the advertised 25%, sometimes quite a bit more. Against a theoretical unit with 16 pierce armor they'd in fact be doing 400% more damage. Of course, if the target armor is high enough to completely negate the attack, then there's no advantage at all, with rams being a good example. Still, doing 30-40% to more damage against infantry and heavy cavalry is a very significant bonus, and probably more than was intended. Of course, it also applies to bombard cannons and cannon galleons as well, which conveniently show the increase to their attack. Again, in most cases they're getting a tiny bit over that advertised 25% because of the effect of armor. So that's the Burgundians bonuses, where you can see the theme of earlier discounted techs actually shows up a couple of times, with a surprisingly good gunpowder bonus in the late game for any infantry you may encounter. Things are about to get more complicated and quirky though, as we switch to their first unique unit, the Custilier. That's why in Castle Age its HP and armor seem to fit right in with the Knight and Cavalier, though notice its attack says plus 25, which we'll talk about in a second. It's cheaper than the knight line, though of course you need a castle to create them, so arguably it's just making up for a higher upfront cost. Their quick 15 second creation time is also nice for a castle unit, meaning the castle works at the same rate as two stables. All the units here have the same movement speed and no unusual bonus damage, making them comparable in many ways. Similarly, in Imperial Age, the Paladin's base stats are slightly better across the board in terms of HP, Pierce Armor, and base attack, and again is cheaper to upgrade but more expensive on a per unit basis. The major difference seems to come down to that insanely high attack added to the Castilier. What that's reflecting is their unique charge mechanic, where the first attack deals about 4 times their usual damage, while after there's a 40 second recharge. After that powerful first hit, the longer they stay in combat, the worse they end up performing. Over a 40 second charge cycle, the Custilier in sustained fighting has 12% lower DPS than a knight, 24% less than a cavalier, and in imperial age about 9% less than a paladin. This is if we don't take armor into account, and higher armor would actually make the Custilier look even worse in this comparison. While that's somewhat made up for in their cheaper cost, and they're not awful when used in this way, the point is that's not how they're meant to be used. They're a shock cavalry unit that are intended to quickly overwhelm a small army of low HP units, or jump in for a few quick attacks and then retreat. One example of where the charge mechanic is actually very strong is when raiding. After being fully upgraded, they take out villagers in one attack, whereas the paladin requires three. Likewise, in Castle Age, they can take out villagers in two attacks instead of the four needed by the knight or cavalier. I've gone through a lot of specific matchups in a previous video, but for the purposes of a Civ overview, I think that gives a decent sense of their trade-off. Generally, I think the Knight line is a little easier to use, and requires less attention, all with a lower upfront cost. 
The Nightline's higher HP and Pierce Armor in the late game also make them a little more resistant to arrows. On the other hand, the Custilier has the unique ability to snowball quickly against low HP units, especially if you have a starting numbers advantage. They also work well at sniping Siege, so I wouldn't say they're useless or even underpowered. They're just more specialized than the generic Nightline, which Burgundians are already heavily incentivized to use. But now, let's move on to their second unique unit, the Flemish Militia. This unit goes hand in hand with their Imperial Age unique tech, Flemish Revolution. For 1200 food and 650 gold, it has a one-time effect of replacing all of your villagers with Flemish Militia, and then allows you to train additional ones at the town center. Looking at its stats, it's actually quite similar to a champion, though it also has features of the spear line, doing extra damage against cavalry and camels, with the added advantage of not taking bonus damage from skirmishers. Despite having a smaller bonus, their strong stats overall mean they do almost as well against paladins as the halberdier, so they're definitely an anti-cavalry unit. That said, unlike the other two units here, they have no bonus damage against buildings, as that was taken away for making them a bit too good at melting castles. Their main weaknesses are archers or hand cannons, and even siege can be quite effective against them. Also, while Flemish Revolution initially appears to have a high upfront cost, with 150 villagers, it works out to 8 food and just over 4 gold each, and the real cost is in trying to rebuild your economy afterward. I've crunched the numbers before and looked at everything from overbooming to 200 villagers, all the way to adding extra town centers beforehand to speed up the reboom. There's some interesting ideas to play with and different strategies to try, but in practice, this is usually a way to either seal a game you're already winning or a desperation move to put up one final stand. It's among the most polarizing techs in the community, as very few unique techs in the game have such a pronounced one-time use. Especially against cavalry civilizations, it can be quite strong, and something to keep in the back of your mind if you feel the need to go all in at a particular moment. Another late game focused unique tech available is Burgundian Vineyards. When the civilization was first released, this had the one-time effect of converting all food directly into gold, again adding to the initial backlash against having a lot of one-time gimmicks. The effect has now been changed to add a small trickle of gold from each of your farms. It ends up giving about 1 gold per farmer per minute, so as an example, with 30 farmers, it's like having an extra relic, or an invisible fully upgraded gold miner. Personally, I usually hold off on this tech until at least Imperial Age, as gold in Castle Age is fairly easy to come by, and you probably won't have enough farmers for a quick return. The main practical use of this tech is in post-Imperial 1v1s, where having a decent farming economy means you can afford to periodically add in extra siege units that your opponent can't. It's not a massive amount of gold, but gold units can really be worth their weight in, well, gold, at that stage of the game. So that's the Burgundians' unique units and techs. You can see the devs really tried to go outside the box a few different times, adding the charge mechanic, the one-time use of Flemish Revolution, and even a permanent gold trickle from farms, giving a leg up over many civilizations in Trash Wars. To tie everything together, let's move on now and take a look at their tech tree, starting with the archers. Right away, there's a lot missing here. Even with early double bit axe and a gold mining tech that could be justified earlier, I don't see Burgundians being played very often as an archer sieve. They're missing Arbalester, Thumb Ring, Ring Archer Armor, along with almost anything related to Cavalry Archer. I do think the Hand Cannoneer can fly a bit under the radar, especially since the 25% attack bonus often does considerably more in practice. It's a very similar tech tree to the Teutons, who I gave a C+, so for consistency I'll give a slightly higher B-, carried by the deceptively hard-hitting Hand Cannoneers. Next up for Infantry, essentially they have the full tech tree, minus supplies and of course Eagle Warriors. Technically, Flemish Militia are infantry as well, though I see them mostly as an entirely different strategy. Unfortunately, none of their bonuses synergize specifically with infantry, and nothing in particular really stands out. I'd say they're about an average B, though you certainly aren't going wrong with infantry as a counter to either cavalry or trash units. Next for the cavalry, this one's a bit tricky, because first of all, there's no bloodlines, or any of the more exotic cavalry options. At the same time, they do get cavalier in age early, and save half the cost on all of their stable tax. Considering the savings on the paladin upgrade, I think I'll still give them an A-, as that's a pretty big savings in 1v1 especially, and in mid to late castle age, the cavalier is quite strong, for virtually no extra cost. The Custilier also has an interesting use case to overwhelm and snowball once you have a large mass of them, though generally I think the traditional nightline is the safer play. Next up, let's take a look at their Siege, which is a pretty notable weakness for the Sif. You do have Bombard Cannons with some extra attack, but are missing every other final upgrade, as well as Siege Engineers. 
This feels to me like a C grade, where you have the very basics and one decent option, but overall just doesn't feel very special. Moving on to the Navy, this one's also a mixed bag. There's no heavy demolition ship, dry dock, shipwright, and also no direct naval bonus, though early wood and gold upgrades could be an option with a long-term payoff. You could argue that having gill nets in age earlier is an early bonus, but that feels quite greedy to me in feudal age, as it's still 200 wood. A lot of other sieves have an edge in both the early and late game, and overall I'd say it's a C plus for early water, and potentially up to a B in the late game, if you can maximize your early ecotex into a nice boom, for a B minus on the water overall. Taking a quick look at the monks, you of course have a relic bonus, though it doesn't feel huge for a monk in siege push. It also doesn't feel like monks fit particularly well with booming, so there's a bit of a mismatch with the Burgundian's identity. That said, basically every useful monk technology is there except theocracy, which is the one allowing only one monk to lose faith when you have a group conversion. I'd say this one's a B plus, as there's a lot available, but nothing that really puts it over the top. Checking in on their defenses, overall it's a pretty complete university tech tree. If you're being overwhelmed in the late game, I could also see an argument that Flemish Revolution is potentially a strong defensive tech. In fact, despite being a cavalry civilization, if you have a pretty defensive playstyle, I think Burgundians might be a good fit, and I'd give them an A- for defenses. Next, let's take a look at their trash war options, meaning units that don't cost any gold. In this case, they have mostly upgradable trash units, aside from notably the final skirmisher armor and bloodlines for the Hazar. Burgundian vineyards giving a permanent gold trickle arguably makes up for that, letting you add the odd extra gold unit, which can give a lot of value. If you and your opponent are both using nothing but trash units, even one onager or bombard cannon can have a massive impact. Lacking bloodlines hurts enough it's not an A level, but I'd say in this case it's an A-. The stats back up that they don't really struggle in long games, and Flemish Militia are actually a great anti-trash response if things start to go sideways. And finally, we'll finish with their economy. Not only is every ecotech available one age earlier, but they're even discounted to make them easier to pick up. Subjectively, it feels quite easy to sneak in those techs, especially in Castle Age, where food can be tight. Considering the extra late game gold income as well, I'd say overall it's an A- for economy. The early game still holds them back from being top tier in my opinion, even if their potential to boom on closed maps is arguably among the best in the game. So to give some final thoughts, I think the safest play is to actually use them similar to Franks, with a scout opening into Knights, and in this case an early Cavalier. Whether in a 1v1 or team game, Cavalier can be quite oppressive when you have a good economy backing them up. Even in 1v1s, you can easily afford Paladin, and use the extra resources you saved on hand cannoneers to counter any halberdiers. Thinking about their map strengths and weaknesses, on open maps like Arabia, the fact you're missing a passive Dark Age bonus means in the early game it's often easy to fall behind, and grabbing early techs can actually enhance that feeling, even with their discount. At the end of the day, even if they have a long payoff, you're still spending resources, putting you behind in the short term. Likewise, on water or land water hybrid maps, there's just many other civilizations that get out to a stronger start, and as Burgundians on those maps, it can often feel like you're playing from behind. The upshot is on closed maps where you're able to fully wall, or even better starting on arena with walls squaring off your section of the map, being able to get those ecotechs before anyone else can set up a really powerful boom into your cavalry and gunpowder. But speaking of square spaces, big thanks to this video's sponsor, Squarespace. If you're a budding entrepreneur, blogger, or someone looking to organize an online community, but have no idea how to make a professional looking website from scratch, Squarespace has great tools to help you out. I personally know someone who uses Squarespace to sell their artwork online as a side hustle, and uses Squarespace extensions to handle all of the bookkeeping, taxes, and shipping. Because who wants to deal with that? You just pick a template and domain name and you're good to go. Visit squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash spirit of the law to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So hopefully this video gave you some ideas for the next time you're playing Burgundians, and help put some of their unusual bonuses into better perspective. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.